News, a case of road rage caught on camera. A bystander caught the very moment that a man pulled out a gun and fired outside his car window. Tonight, the Bear County Sheriff's Office says they know who they are looking for in this case. Take a look. He is 25 year old Edwin Albino. Investigators say the shooting happened around five last night near WT Montgomery and Highway 90. Fortunately, no one was hit. Bear County deputies were able to see Albino's license plate in this video. They tried to serve an arrest warrant tonight, but he wasn't home. Instead, they found a 13 year old girl at that home who says her mom is also missing. This residence is actually occupied by Albino and this young lady that uh, by all accounts, this young lady left her 13 year old daughter unaccount uh, unattended overnight. Uh, and so that is indicative of the fact that that something may have something bad may have happened to this uh, this young lady. OK, let's go back because here's another look at the man that deputies are looking for. Investigators say that Albino may be linked to another road rage incident. Now, if you know where he is, don't confront him. Instead, what police want you to do is call the Bear County deputies and their number is 210 Three three five six thousand. A lot of questions in that case. Also breaking tonight, Bear County deputies working a deadly crash that has shut down the northbound lanes of TPC Parkway near Viejas. Now, investigators say a motorcyclist lost control and crashed on the parkway. The 31 year old man pronounced dead. His identity has not been released. Investigators expect to have those northbound lanes of TPC Parkway shut down for at least a couple of hours. $700 limousine rides, expensive steak dinners, and you paid for it. As CPS Energy changes its top leadership and tries to raise your utility bills, our defenders in a months long investigation uncovering sky high executive spending. Our investigative team examined more than 4,300 pages of purchasing records of longtime president and CEO Paula Gold Williams, who, as you know, is set to leave the utility company next month. Now, those records also include her former chief operating officer, Fred Bonniewell, who resigned earlier this fall. Here's tonight's Defenders Report. <laughs> On November 13th, 2018, then CPS Energy Executive Fred Bonniewell charged breakfast, lunch, and dinner to his corporate credit card. Three square meals in a single day paid by you, the taxpayer. The defenders reviewed expense sheets and receipts for Bonniewell from his tenure with the public utility and found that he was a prolific spender of other people's money. Bonniewell, who made well over $300,000 a year, routinely charged multiple meals a day to his car, often at some of San Antonio's splashiest restaurants and often with other CPS executives in tow. Bonniewell, who resigned as chief operating officer in October, days after the defenders exposed past complaints against him, ate at this brunch place north of downtown on more than 100 occasions, sometimes several times a week. There's an absolute ratepayer scandal underway in San Antonio. I think the, the documents show nothing less. James Quintero is a policy director with the Texas Public Policy Foundation. After reviewing the paperwork, he offered this analysis. My big takeaway from this is that you have a small cadre of top officials who are whining and dining on the public dime and it's costing San Antonio ratepayers money and it's eroding public trust. And it doesn't end there. The same records also indicate that Bonniewell frequently used this luxury chauffeur service for rides to and from the San Antonio airport. During one trip to the Midwest in January 2019, Bonniewell used a different chauffeur company to take him from Kalamazoo, Michigan to Chicago's Midway Airport. The cost for the two and a half hour drive, more than $729. Bonnie Wells 2019 purchasing card expenditures totaled well over $53,000, higher than the median household income in San Antonio that year, according to U.S. Census data. But the utility was already well aware of spending concerns with him. Two internal ethics complaints filed that year specifically targeted Bonnie Wells' use of the card including one that asked why he was permitted to have an open-ended budget. 
The expense sheets were also signed by President and CEO Paula Gold Williams. Gold Williams purchasing records covering her entire tenure as CPS Energy's leader also raised questions. Among the more than 14,000 bucks in payments for luxury chauffeurs is this charge to take her from a Washington, D.C. hotel to Reagan National Airport. More than $225 spent to travel less than seven miles. It is time to rein that in. San Antonio Mayor Ron Nuremberg, an ex officio member of the utilities board, says Gold Williams' scheduled departure from the agency next month provides a good opportunity to establish rules on proper spending procedures. You would expect office expenses to be normal parts of operational uh, needs of, of any business, uh, but in terms of extravagant expenses uh, being uh, made using public resources, that, that is something that needs to stop. Gold Williams also used her corporate card to make close to $9,600 in flower and gift basket purchases. Many included gift messages suggesting they were made on behalf of CPS Energy, but others included no description at all leaving us to guess whether those purchases were professional or personal. Gold Williams appeared to abandon the practice in August 2018. Is that normal behavior? No. When you have a situation like that, I, I think there's an immediate red, red flag that comes to mind. Um, taxpayer money is meant for public purposes, not private affairs. And so uh, this definitely falls into the uh, questionable camp, particularly in a time like this where you have so many taxpayers and ratepayers struggling to put food on the table. There's simply no justification for it. For the Defenders, Dylan Collier, KSAT 12 News. CPS Energy officials offered no response to this story, none, even after we provided them specific purchases that we were looking at. Officials confirm Fred Bonniewell was paid nearly $81,000 in his final paycheck, including more than $65,000 in unused vacation time. Now, that's something we learned just hours after CPS Energy officials proposed a rate hike. If it's approved, it would be the first increase that we've seen from that utility in eight years. So the company wants to increase rates by more than 3%, and that comes out to about an extra $5 a month for the average customer. Now, the hike would change the base rate and fuel charges, but keep in mind that for, that um, charges from the water freeze, those are still being disputed. And once that's settled, it is possible that we'll see yet another increase. CPS Energy is planning to discuss that in two years. And when it comes to this rate increase, City Council is planning to take a vote on that January 13th. And you can be assured we're going to continue to watch all of this. We have an article on our website that details today's proposal and the history of CPS Energy. You can check it out on KSAT.com. All right, so stop what you're doing right now because we want you to pay really close attention to the video that we're about to show you. Police are hoping that you'll help them solve a man's murder. The victim in this case is Christopher Olivares. Someone stabbed him to death on Kirk Place back on September 25th. So you're going to look at this video now. Right there, you see a man outside of Olivares' home, and that was several days before he was found dead. Now, police want you to take a really good look at that man. He's a person of interest. They want to talk to him. SAPD previously released nighttime video of a man leaving Olivares' house the night that he died. But it's unclear at this point if they're looking at the same person in these two separate videos. So if you recognize this person, if you know who that is or know anything about him, you can call detectives at 210-207-7635. These guys are going full throttle, I guess. I mean, no respect for anybody's privacy or anybody's anybody's you know, lives or anything at all. That's what 34-year-old professional mariachi performer Rogelio Martinez says after someone stole his 2015 Hemi Ram 1500 Friday night. He's desperate to get his truck back because it's what allows him to get his band Mariachi Fusion around South Texas and ultimately provide for his family. Martinez says the locked truck parked on East Commerce. It had a sound system, mic cables, instruments, his wallet inside of it. Martinez offering a $1,000 reward for anyone with any information that can help police find his truck. If you've seen it, you're urged to call SAPD at 210-207-7273.
Tonight, the future of abortion is in question. Right now, the Supreme Court is hearing arguments about an abortion law in Mississippi, but whatever it decides could affect the rest of the country. So Mississippi wants to ban abortions after 15 weeks. And the issue is that Roe versus Wade and another case in 1992 don't allow such bans before the 24 week mark. That's usually when the fetus is able to survive outside the womb. St. Mary's University law professor Cal Al Kaufman says that the court has to look at several different aspects of the law before it can make a decision. That to what extent have people in society relied on these opinions? Or more specifically, to what extent have women and families relied on the possible right to have an abortion in terms of their uh, developing their lives, their professional lives and personal lives? So the Supreme Court is expected to rule on this by late June. It's still ahead. First responders in rural Bear County continue to feel the effects of the pandemic. There's not enough of them. Why there is still a shortage in workers and how they're trying to fill the empty spots. Plus, we know the Omicron variant is in the U.S. So what are San Antonians doing to protect themselves? That's what we're going to discuss next on The Night Beat. We've got even more breaking news tonight. Two people shot in their cars. Witnesses telling police this may be another case of road rage. It happened just moments ago on Schertz Road, not too far from Perrin Bidal Road and Wurzbach Parkway. San Antonio police say one vehicle pulled over on the side of the road when another driver pulled up and fired. Police say a 21 year old woman in critical condition, a 19 year old man who was in the car with her also hurt. Police are still searching for the suspect or suspects. Health experts said it would happen. It has a vaccinated person in California. Now the first in the US to test positive for the Omicron variant. White House officials say a person who was a traveler who returned from South Africa on November 22nd tested positive seven days later. They say that person was only experiencing mild symptoms. Back here at home, people eager to get ahead of the virus by getting their COVID-19 vaccine. This is what it looked like at the Alamo Dome tonight. People lined up in their cars along Cherry Street waiting for their turn to roll up their sleeves. But despite the Omicron variant being in the U.S. tonight, it's not the only reason why people are choosing to get their shot. I mean, I don't want to wind up getting sick. I'm already 48, so I want to stay healthy. We are getting Emily's second shot so that she can be fully vaccinated. We're looking forward to going to the movies. And Emily's going... scared. She's scared, but we're excited to go to Fiesta, Texas and all the places that we've and been. Disney World. Disney World. If you would like to get your shot, the Alamo Dome offering them tomorrow from noon to eight. It'll be closed on Friday for the UTSA game. Appointments are not required for these vaccinations. Whether it's a heart attack or a car crash, they're there when we need them most. We're talking about EMS. Unfortunately, like many other careers, they're really feeling the impact of the pandemic. The night team's Lee Waldman explains the staffing shortage affects some parts of Bear County more than others. Their rigs are packed full ready for any emergency call that might come up. People are at their very worst when they're calling 911 and they're seeing us come out. So it's getting harder to do that job. We've seen a lot of people leave the industry, which is uh, unfortunate. I can understand why they'd want to leave. People are worried about getting sick. They're worried about their family. Looking at Texas specifically in 2019, about 46% of certified medics were working on ambulances. So far in 2021, that number has dropped to 27.4%. There's a national shortage of EMS professionals, EMTs and paramedics. Here in the metropolitan area of San Antonio, SAFD isn't feeling the nationwide shortage. But in rural Bear County, that's a different story. We have never seen uh, such a demand for EMS professionals and we have never seen a shortage like this. San Antonio Fire Department is able to avoid the shortage by training all of their firefighters to a minimum of an EMT B level. When retirements happen, those slots are filled with a new cadet class. It's harder to fill slots in rural areas. We've been working with the legislature to find some new programs to to increase EMS education in rural areas. We're looking at distance learning programs. Acadian Ambulance Services is starting to pay people to go to EMT and paramedic school. Already certified paramedics are eligible for a $10,000 sign on bonus in our area. They're getting creative to solve the problem. We're trying to avoid a situation where someone dials 911 and there's no one to send.
The Texas legislature is trying to help with the EMS shortage. Last month in a special session, Senate Bill 8 allocated $21.7 million to emergency medical services. That money is going towards incentivizing funding education programs and prioritizing rural and underserved areas. Back to you. All right, Lee, thank you. Taking a live look outside right now at Fort Ted, not too much traffic. It is 61 degrees right now. A really nice, comfortable night, I gotta say. Yeah, I'm thinking Adam Kasky probably is, you know, I had to put my tie back on, I had to put my jacket back on. I don't get to hang out in the lights and wind crest like last night. Not in short sleeves like I was yeah, last see. night. Wearing jeans, more comfortable shoes. I know what you mean. It's really all about the lights. Last night in wind crest, it was so nice. And I really think we gotta get back out there at 5, 6, and 10 to show off even more displays because you just can't narrow it down. All right, let's take a look at our beautiful sunset. This is a shot posted on our KSAT Connect app or really our Weather Authority app from Taylor again in San Antonio. Good high thin clouds giving us that nice colorful display once that sun dips just beneath the horizon. Sunset 535 p.m. We started the day at 51 degrees, topped out at 76 for the high temperature, so both a little above average. You look at the readings right now, down into the 40s up in the panhandle and even West Texas, beautiful Alpine, 49. Meanwhile, 61 here in San Antonio and still hanging on to 70 in Laredo. Not far behind, you could two list 68, but 59 in neighboring Carrizo Springs. So big temperature differences over short distances in some cases here. Tomorrow morning, 50s to near 60 is what we're anticipating. So about 50 degrees Kerrville, Fredericksburg, 60 in Pleasanton and Gonzales, right near 60 here in San Antonio. And then tomorrow afternoon, well into the 70s, even pushing 80 degrees again, farther south and west of town and get closer to the Rio Grande, right about that 80 degree mark. Uh, Stone Oak about 77, Helotus at mid 70s, 75 tomorrow, Seguin 77 for the high temperature. And highs aren't gonna change much over the next several days. We're gonna see them into the 70s through Sunday. Weak cold front drops them into the 60s by Monday. Dew points, 50s to near 60, and you actually felt a bit of humidity in the air today, and you're going to notice it again the next several days, especially in the afternoons, and I do think that's going to give us some morning fog as well. So dew points are up a little bit, longer nights, calm wind out there. I anticipate a little bit of fog. We just have the high cloud streaming in from the southwest. No big wound up system across the nation right now. We're still watching this upper level disturbance near the Baja Peninsula. It's throwing a little bit of weak rain making energy our way and eh, some lackluster moisture. Just some of those high clouds. So tomorrow a dry day just in the morning that dampness with dew and fog. Some reduced visibility for the commute 59. 77 by the afternoon with some sunshine and then rain chances up to 30% on Friday and then Sunday night, early Monday at 20% with a weak cold front. Right. Yeah, and, and hopefully a little rain in there somewhere. We could use it. Yeah, yes, we should. All right. Hopefully we'll get it. Fingers crossed. All right. Another setback for the Cowboys, Greg. Yeah, I tell you what, Amari Cooper set to play Thursday. It's still not ruled out, but he only was able to practice one day, and that was very limited. When we come back, Amari's return is now questionable. We'll give you the latest on that. And also, Navarro's playoff motivation is more than just a football game when we come back. This Essay Salute holiday greeting is brought to you by the Joe A. Gomez Law Firm. Hi, I'm Matt Powell from the Gomez Law Firm, wishing all of our service members and their families a safe and happy holiday season. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The Dallas Cowboys have activated wide receiver Amari Cooper, but was reported as limited in practice, officially listed as questionable for tomorrow night's game against the Saints in New Orleans. Cooper is unvaccinated, has missed the last two Cowboy games against the Chiefs in Kansas City, the Raiders on Thanksgiving Day, but lost both losses, by the way, after he tested positive for COVID-19. The Cowboys were hoping to have him back along with C.D. Lamb, who suffered a concussion in the loss to the Chiefs, but Lamb is the only sure thing right now. Head coach Mike McCarthy will not be on the sidelines after testing positive for COVID-19 this week. Joining players, tackle Terrence Steele, rookie Nashawn Wright is out, along with five of his assistants. As a result, Dan Quinn will move from the press box to the sideline to assume head coaching duties, and former Giants coach Ben McAdoo will move from his role as a consultant into the booth to help out tomorrow. Yes, you need a program to follow this. That said, Trayvon Diggs has been held to just one interception the last five games and are picking up seven in the first six after teams stopped throwing to him. How does he keep from trying to do too much now, fending off the frustration? 
just keep my mental straight, just focus him. You know, at the end of the day, it's about winning. It's not about me, it's about winning. And, you know, we that's my main focus, is doing whatever I can to help the team win, even though if I don't have as many opportunities or whatever, but it's my job for when those opportunities do come, you know, I gotta make it count just, you know, to help my team win. So, you know, I don't think about it too much. You know, if it come, it come. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But when it does come, be sure to make the play. And we just found out tonight who Trayvon and the Dallas D will go up against tomorrow night. Taysom Hill who will make his first start at quarterback this season tomorrow for the Saints, according to ESPN, after practicing this entire week with a partially torn plantar fasciitis. Meantime, Houston Texas head coach David Culley has reinstated safety Justin Reed for the game against the Colts this Sunday after he had suspended their star defensive player before the loss against the Jets for violating team rules. So how did the meeting go between Culley and Reed? Uh, it wasn't really wasn't a meeting. We just said we're back business as usual. We're ready to go. Uh, he uh, served his time, and we're, we're moving on. All right, Kelly held his press conference virtually today as a precaution after a number of players have become ill, including wide receiver Brandon Cooks. But Kelly says it is not COVID-related. The UTSA Roadrunners like nothing better than to cap off their historic season by winning their first ever Conference USA Championship. But they know beating the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers for the second time in a single singer season will be a tall task, especially after it took a last minute interception by Clarence Hicks to stop the scoring to preserve their 52-46 victory. What does it mean to the Roadrunners to play the team in this position for the first time in school history? I mean, it's our first time, you know, it's that right there, that's something that we've never done. That's something that, you know, we're bringing to this city. We're bringing to the future generations to come. Uh, we're going to show everybody that, you know, we are some. We are a team to reckon with. We are a team that can come out and do the things that we can do as long as we, you know, let the triangle travel. That's what we've been saying since day one, just let the triangle travel. And as long as we do that, I feel like, you know, everything else will be fine. All right, kickoff in the Dome set for 6 p.m. Getting to the next round of the high school football playoffs, not the only motivation for Navarro. Next. The fifth-ranked Navarro Panthers are in the Class 4A Division II Region 4 Finals against number three Quarrel Gobblers this Friday night after a dramatic 29-28 overtime victory against Sinton last week. Sinton had gone up by a touchdown after the two ended regulation tie at 21-all until Antoine Mimbens scored a one-yard touchdown. And instead of tie, the Panthers decided to go for the win, and Membe was scored the two-point conversion as well for the one-point overtime win. Now they face Quarrel, gobbled up Wimberley 36-26 to go 12-1. And, and get this, the Gobblers only lost this season have been to Navarro in week 4, 29-27 on a game-winning 30-yard field goal by Jackson Mockerud. All four years we've made it to the fourth round, and hopefully we can get past it this week. We've had a pretty good team this year, and we've been getting better every week. If we keep working, I think we've got a really good shot of making it to the next round. Just like us, they're a traditional power. Everybody knows Quero. Um, they're a great football team, coached really well, a bunch of athletes. I mean, it's, it's going to be a great game. And the Panthers will be playing with extra motivation Friday night for teammate Tristan Brashears, who was diagnosed with cancer following injury back in October. Even head coach Travis Bush and his Canyon Cougars supported Tristan online and on the field on October the 22nd by wearing his initials on their helmets for their game against Veterans Memorial. He's a defensive tackle, offensive lineman for us. Um, he was having a great, great year for us. He was right up at the lead in tackles from defensive tackle spot for us um, up until he couldn't play anymore. And... Um, just, but an outstanding young man. He's a worker. Gives it everything he has, and um, he's, he's you know he's irreplaceable. But his his spirit's there with him. Um, he's supporting us everything we can do. Just more than a football game for that entire community. Absolutely, and we want to join in the thoughts for that young man. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks, Greg. We'll be right back after this. All right, you got to check out this video. Most people enjoy a nice slice of pumpkin pie with whipped cream on top. But two-year-old Keziah Joseph loves it. Like, really? Look at him. Ooh, look at that face. Yeah, this Thanksgiving, it was really his first time trying it. His reaction pretty much speaks for itself. Look, he's getting the shakes. Went viral on social media. His mom says that the pie literally shook him up and left him shivering with pleasure. Look, even it, his eyes rolled. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Your first yeah, interview. There you yeah, go. right. Yeah. It's like a drug then, you know, oh, give me more. All right, so temperature is 70s rest of the week. <laughs> That's it for the night beat GMSA at 430. Have a great night.